Hey guys, Brennan Mejia here, the Red Ranger from Power Rangers Dino Charge. So, as you may know if you've seen Dino Charge, my character Tyler gets into a relationship with Shelby the Pink Ranger. With that being said, Watch Mojo has a top 20 best Power Rangers couples ranking. So, let's give it a watch and see where Tyler and Shelby rank or if we make the list at all. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the more phenomenal power couples. We'll consider couples who are dating, married, or just had a ton of chemistry. Oh, so much love is in the I air. Love you. I'm gonna miss you so much. So obviously, Tommy and Kimberly, like that was the it couple. I feel in the '90s, if you're in a Power Rangers, you know that's that's like for me, they'd probably be you know number one for the list. Let's keep going. So she's gonna run just fine. Aren't you, baby? Yes. You, you do know that I'm your girlfriend, and that Nitro is just a truck. Shh. It hurt her feelings. I didn't see a lot of Ninja Steel, so I'm not well versed with this couple. So what you guys are learning about them is what I'm learning about them. Number 18, Udana and Lian Bo. I do remember this one. They had capes and magic wands. I mean, that's not going off of their couple thing, but I just thought the magic theme was really cool. Both halves of this enchanting couple were members of the Mystic Wizards who protected the world from the Mystic world. Wizards. During their career, they felt After the sudden separation, Udana went on to lead a team of rangers. Meanwhile, Lian Bo was secretly brainwashed into becoming Korag the Night Wolf. Don't you hate that brainwashing? Once the truth was revealed, it was heartbreaking to see Udana struggle to get her husband back. Fans were over the moon when their fairy tale ended with the two standing side by side with their only son. Ready? I, I feel like putting that at number 18, I mean, I, I gotta see what the rest of their list is, but I feel like they should be higher up in that list just off of how tragic that is, you know? like brainwashed to being a bad guy, actively fighting against her husband before finally getting him back onto her side. That's just so brutal. And they got to be a team at the end and right off into the sunset with the Red Ranger son, which is cool. But now we're on to another one, which is from Time Force, it looks like. So let's see what they say. During the Time Force and Wild Force team up episode, Taylor and Eric got off to a rocky start after an awkward first encounter and continued to clash with one another afterwards. You met other Power Rangers? Mm -hmm. Yep. I never saw this crossover. <laughs> I kind of want to go watch it now because I love Eric and Time Force. That's cool. I didn't, they made a love interest on a crossover episode. Let's keep watching. Along the way, they learn to respect and cooperate with each other. Like we said, not all couples have to officially hook up, but you can just sense the chemistry between them. They're both abrasive and commanding, but learn to put aside their egos for their respective team's sake. And Eric showed Taylor that it's okay to make friends with their teammates based on past experiences. Uh, hey, be careful with that now. That's not a toy, you know. Hey, I was in the Air Force. I could probably teach you a few things about this. Dan Southworth, who plays Eric, is also a really skilled stunt performer. So, again, I mentioned in previous videos where I love when Ranger actors actually know stunts or acrobatics and whatever, and he is one of those guys. If you watch the Time Force, I believe it's the finale where they have a fight in the clock tower. He just goes to town getting to show off his skill. So cool, so talented, and he still keeps up with his training. If you follow him on Instagram, yeah. Yeah, I wanna be him when I grow up. This love story comes off as a more modern take on Kimberly and Tommy's relationship. Trent takes after the latter by being the new guy in Reefside. Meanwhile, Kira imitates Kimberly by being a pterodactyl ranger who takes a liking to the outsider. Unlike the OG couple, their relationship never really evolved into a full-blown on-screen romance. So I did watch, I think all of Dino Thunder, or a lot of it, but man, my brain, I feel like I don't know, as you get older and like life gets as busy as it is now, cause you know, I have a kid and you know, I have a lot of work and all these things. It's hard for my brain to remember details like this. And I watch and I go, oh yeah, it's kind of like, you know, if something nostalgic happens or it takes you back or you eat a bite of ice cream that you loved as a kid, that's kind of what watching this is doing for me. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't even think of them as a couple cause I couldn't remember. And like they said, they weren't like a fully developed couple, whatever the heck that means, but seeing it, it just brings it back into my mind. So we are about a quarter into the list, give or take, and I haven't seen Tyler or Shelby yet, which could be a good or a bad thing. So either we're a really good couple or really just not in the top 20 and no one cares about our love and it doesn't mean anything. Let's keep watching. Power Rangers Dino Fury and Power Rangers Cosmic Fury. 
Love wasn't exactly in the air for this duo when they first met. The adventurous and friendly Amelia was a proud believer of the supernatural. At the same time, Ollie was a skeptical and often blunt know-it-all who loved to shoot down all of her magical theories. By the way, Amelia, so you're clearly not here for zaps, so what's your deal? Mom and I just moved to Pine Ridge. She's an archaeologist, wants to unearth some of the history here. Their polar opposite worldviews caused them to clash every now and again, but over time, they came to accept each other's differences. Eventually, their mutual understanding blossomed into romance, and they finally admitted their feelings for each other. I feel the same. I kind of figured that out. Unfortunately, their relationship had to be put on pause in Cosmic Fury when Ollie was brainwashed by Lord Zed. I've noticed a common theme with Power Rangers, now seeing them kind of listed together. The romantic couples often tend to be rangers who go bad and then like get brought back by their romantic counterpart. I mean, you have Tommy and Kimberly. You're not, not that he was brought back by her per se, but like Green Ranger was evil, then he wasn't. And then we had in Dino Thunder, the White Ranger was evil, and then he wasn't. And we had uh, Mystic Force, evil, and then not evil. And then we had in this where he goes evil in Cosmic Fury and then becomes good again. So it's just kind of interesting. Like, okay, if you noticed, if you watched Dino Charge, I never went evil, Shelby never went evil. We just stayed good the whole time. So just something to be said towards our team. Number 13, Dylan and Summer Lansdowne. I have been told so many times that RPM is an amazing season. And I watched one episode, the first episode, and it was cool storyline. And I thought the fight was great and all that. I just couldn't get past the theme song. It just did not vibe with me. And I, I don't know, like typically when I watch Power Rangers season, that hype beginning is what gets me pumped for the episode, you know, like, Go Zio or whatever, do 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 Dino Charge stuff, but I just I couldn't get into RPM's theme song, so I stopped watching it because of that. And now I know you're like, well, go watch it because it's good, and I believe you. But again, because I have so little free time these days, if if you like strike out on the first thing, I'm just like sorry. And I know maybe it's a the wrong choice, but it's just a fact right now. At some point, maybe if I really really have a lot of free time, I'll watch it. But for now. Eh. We've all seen the classic heartwarming girl wants to save the brooding rebel boy love story many times, but this felt more natural considering we've seen what Dylan's been through. And despite his protests, Summer saw someone worth saving. You need to go now. I'm not leaving here without you. Why are you always trying to save because me? Because you're worth saving. Okay, as I just mentioned, I haven't watched RPM because I don't really care for the theme song, but lines like that were like, why do you keep trying to save me? Because you're someone worth saving? That's I don't know, that dialogue may be cheesy to you, but I found that to be like, oh, that's that was well acted too. I, it made me see why maybe people like this season, so maybe I will watch it. Okay, let's continue. Number 11, Joel Rawlings and Angela Fairweather, Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. So, tonight I thought I'd relax, maybe invite you to dinner. Dinner? <laughs> the galley at eight. Joel's reputation as the Sky Cowboy made it easy for him to charm the women around. Sky Cowboy. <laughs> Number 10, Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa. Yeah, I'm glad, okay, they are doing other beings that aren't Power Rangers in their list. Rita and Zed should definitely be top 10. So I'm glad they cracked the top 10. But now I'm curious, are they gonna have a Ranger couple be number one or is it gonna be just someone Ranger adjacent? Let's find out. Number nine. Theodore Theo T. Martin and Lily Lil Chillman. On the second Tuesday of every month, they'd have a lunch appointment. Lily's been waiting outside for 10 minutes. What? Something about a lunch thing. <laughs> well, uh. <laughs> uh, love. Love. Love, love. It wasn't until the season finale that he finally took a chance and asked Lily out on an actual date. All she can say is, What took you so long? The writing took me so long. It was the writing. I wanted to, but the writing said no. Watch my whole season. Then you can see a happy ending. That's what happened. Number eight, Jay Calling and Gia Moran. So now that we're on the Mega Force, this is a season I actually did see more recently because when I booked Dino Charge, I wanted to watch what was, you know, right before. So like, what was the tone of Rangers going into it? From the start, it was obvious that Jake had a crush on Gia and would try to impress or flirt with her. Unfortunately for him, Gia wasn't interested. 
or she was just really good at playing hard to get. It's just some guy looking for attention. You can relate, right? It's a classic goofy guy chases after the independent cool girl scenario. Sadly, like the rest of the 20th anniversary seasons, their relationship wasn't developed very well. However, as time marched on, we saw some semblance of a bond between the two, and subtle hints that Gia might like Jake back. Pretty impressive. What? Oh, nothing. Those hints ultimately paid off in the finale, where after finally defeating the Armada's forces, Gia gave Jake a victory kiss on the cheek. I have to point out the Megaforce cast, they are beautiful people. I mean, like, if you were looking for a cast to be models across the board, it was Megaforce. <laughs> we're getting pretty deep into the list now and still no Dino Charge, no sign of Shelby, no sign of Tyler. I mean, are we gonna crack the top five or are we just not in this at all? I, I hope we're in it. I mean, I'd like to think we could rank in there if some monsters were in there that weren't Rita and Lord Zed, like hopefully Rangers could be in it too. That could be in the top five? Oh, let's see. Number six, Blake Bradley and Tori Hansen, Power Rangers Ninja Storm. They had a good theme song. Off topic, but I think I mentioned this in another video. When I saw Ninja Storm when I was a kid, because I still, like, oh, I'd love to be a Power Ranger one day. I was just kind of getting into acting around that time. And I saw the Yellow Ranger on Ninja Storm, and I thought that we looked too similar. I mean, now we, we really don't look that similar, but he had the hair that I had at the time, or I guess I had it that he, whatever. We both had similar hair, and I thought once he was cast, I was like, man, now I'm never gonna be in Power Rangers because I cast someone that I look too alike. And then many years later, I realized my hair had nothing to do with it, and I could still be a Power Ranger, and I was. Number five, Tyler Navarro and Shelby Watkins. We're top five! It's Navarro, not Navarro, just saying, Tyler Navarro. Where'd you come from? Oh, you know, just uh, in the neighborhood. There is no neighborhood. <laughs> I believe this is yours. Arguably one of the most well-handled neo sabin couples to date, Saban. Though their first encounter was unexpected, the two worked well together, watching each other's backs and even pairing up on certain missions. I have something of yours. My bracelet. I have that still. It's at home. Already we saw Shelby develop a crush on Tyler, supporting him when he worries about his father. One, it's weird to watch myself on this still. At this point, I mean, I'm not one of those actors like, I can never watch myself. I do like watching work that I've been in because I want to see what could be improved upon, if I thought the performance was good, and it's nostalgic. Uh, but it's just, it's weird with Power Rangers specifically sometimes because, especially, I just got my hair cut last week for another job, and so I was getting comments from people that, oh, you're looking more like when you were on Power Rangers when my hair was long, and now that it's short again, I obviously don't look like that right now. But this scene where I walk into the Ranger base, I had just really hurt my ankle like the week before doing stunt training with Yoshi. He was basing me in what's called a hand-to-hand -hand, where he's standing and I'm on his shoulders and I jump into a handstand and I just assumed he knew how to base it. It wasn't his fault, it was mine. He's like, oh, we don't need a spotter, it's fine. And he started running with me because he didn't quite know how to balance it. And so when he brought me down, my ankle rolled and popped and it hurt so bad. And then Yoshi was yelling at this gym where I was like, I broke the Red Ranger, I broke the Red Ranger. Uh, because I was supposed to do a backflip as I entered this scene, not just walk in as the prince. And I actually did a couple backflips, but they were really low because I couldn't jump really. And so they ended up not putting it in the scene, even though I still did it and it hurt. But just know in your mind when you watch this next time, be like, he did a backflip in one of those outtakes because it happened. I feel like Tyler and Shelby could have been top three perhaps, but I'll take top five. That's pretty good, you know, for Watch Mojo. I mean, they said my last name wrong, but that's okay, I forgive them. Thank you for putting me in this list. That was really cool. Now, a question you might be asking yourself is what are Power Ranger actors like behind the scenes? Watch this video to find out. 